for for April thirteenth, twenty twenty three. Um, we have two hearings on the agenda tonight. One is for a determination of applicability. Um, this is for the uh, Pioneer Valley Transit Authority at the Northampton uh, Industrial Drive. And then we have a request for determination of applicability and that's for Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. And that's at 278 Birch Pit Road. Um, if anyone has uh, comments or for anything that's not on the agenda, the two agenda items that I just read off, um, now is your time to stand up and be heard. <laughs> Okay, not hearing any comments. We'll go ahead with. Uh, do we have? We don't have minutes, right? Uh, we do not. No, not. Okay. Before. I'd like everyone to know that this meeting is video recorded. Um, first item is the request for determination of applicability. Yeah, boy, hot day applicability. <laughs> to determine if installation of fencing and bollards, tree removal, and shrub plantings within buffer zone to wetlands is subject to the Northampton Wetlands Ordinance or Mass Wetlands Protection Act. This is for the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority, 54 Industrial Drive, parcel 25A-190. Is there someone here representing that organization? Good evening, this is Steve Packard from STV. We're the designer of record for this project. Okay, if you could give us a brief overview and... Sure, so the Pioneer Valley uh, Transit Authority has a maintenance facility located at 54 Industrial Drive. We're looking to put a security fence around the property. They've had issues with uh, people breaking into their facilities and into their vehicles at other locations around the state. Um, they have, their current facility has some decorative trees. I'm not a landscape architect, but I think they're about a, they're an Aphrodite type tree. They're definitely not native to, to the site or to the wetland. They were planted probably 20 or 30 years ago, um, but they're obstructing kind of the the parking lot that goes around the facility this is right where we want to put the fence and it's along the property line which abuts a wetland that we had our surveyor flag so we're in a position where we'd like to take down these ornamental trees but because of their adjacency to the wetland we want to check before we do that Okay, do, do you have a plan that you want to share with us? Sure. Okay. Not seeing it. It's no. gone. Sorry. All right, pulling it up now. Yeah, thanks.
just let me know when it loads up. Okay. Yep. So this is 54 Industrial Drive. This is the PVTA's facility, their maintenance facility. You enter the site from the north side of the site along a roundabout here. The neat on the left side of the page in the northwest corner of the site, these are the wetlands that we had our surveyor flag. And we've also highlighted the 100 foot setback and the fence that we propose on putting in follows the property line pretty closely. And right along this corner here, this is where those Aphrodite type trees are. They're along the Northwest and the West side of the site. And they're really planted closely together. So they're obstructing our ability to secure the site and put this fence in. And, and are all of the trees that are proposed to be removed arborvitae? And it was clearly the, the one clear that the ones on the sort of the northwest part of the site were being removed, but I couldn't really tell from the plans that what was proposed to be removed to the rear closest to the well. Correct. So if you see the grading lines on the plan, you can kind of tell how previously at some point they graded up to this parking lot. And then they lined the parking lot with these aphrodites. But all the trees that are native to the area are beyond this grading that was done. Okay. So We're just you, looking to so none it. of those are proposed to be removed. It's it's only the arborvitae. Correct. Okay, and they're right along the edge of the paved area, right? Yes. Okay. That helps. And I, the the plan showed some proposed shrubs, um, mostly outside the buffer zone. Is anything proposed to be replanted along the rear of the site? So along the rear of the site, we were not proposing anything to be planted. It's along the northeast side. <laughs> These are the proposed plantings we have. They're just meant to be ornamental shrubs that are two to four feet tall. Um, what's the timetable for your work? Completion by July 31st of this year. Okay. We're looking to give a contractor notice to proceed by the end of the month. There's no grading then? You're just going to what, cut the trees flush with the ground? And... Correct. We do have a small amount of grading though that I would like to point out. There's a transformer that is existing on the property and we're finding some soil erosion. Oh, I see. Yeah. We have some stabilization plan for that area. That's what this line is here. Those are these black lines here. Yeah, those are the contour lines. Where's the erosion control? The erosion control is in, in gray. Well, that's where the soil will be stabilized. Um, but if you're for erosion control, if you're talking about silt socks, um, we don't have a plan for those yet, but we can include those. Is all work being confined to the existing paved areas? For the most part, at the entrance, we're reworking the curbing to accommodate a vehicle gate and walk the fence. Okay. So no new disturbances? No. 
well, except taking the trees down and planting, uh, doing the plantings up there. Right. Most of the plantings are outside of the buffer zone. Mm-hmm. Any more questions from commissioners? Nope. Not for me. Nope. No. Are there any uh, questions or comments from the public? Wow, tough crowd. Um, <laughs> Um, okay, hearing none, I entertain a motion to close the uh, hearing. Uh, it's an RDA, so we can skip the roll call for that one. Yeah. Because it's not technically a hearing. Right. I still need a motion. <laughs> uh, you don't have to move. You don't have to close it because it's not a hearing. So you, you can oh. move oh, forward. For the okay, I'm sorry. The vote. All right. Yeah, I'm comfortable with what's planned. Me too. I'm as well. So, um, we're going to go with the uh, staff recommendations. Mm -hmm. So that would be a negative three to indicate that the work is within buffer zone, but will not remove dredge fill or alter. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yep, I'll move that. We also have to note that the boundaries were not confirmed. Correct. Okay, yeah. Yep, I'll move that recommendation. I'll second it. All in favor? All right. Uh, Jen? Yes. David? Yes. Paul? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Mason? Yep. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks. Okay. Next, we have a request for um, a determination of applicability. Determine if tree removal within buffer zone to wetlands is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act or Northampton Wetlands Ordinance. This is for Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity at 278 Burt's Pit Road. Is there someone here for that? Yes, I, I'm Megan McDonough. I'm the Executive Director of Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. Okay, if you want to uh, explain the project, the sure. plan, plan that you can share with us. Yeah, let me pull that up. Um, we are planning to uh, construct three single family homes um, at 278 Burt's Pit Road. And the um, Planning Board and Conservation Commission previously approved this project when the city um, owned the land, the city gave us the land in order to build affordable housing. That's, and the, um, so I've got too many permits here because this has been ongoing for so long. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's the right map, okay. Um, and we, um, uh, once we took ownership of the property, planned the siting of the houses more in detail, realized that there are trees to the south that we would like to remove in order to get solar access to the houses. Yep. Um, and some of those trees are within a uh, wetlands buffer area. So are you now seeing this map of Birch Pit Road? Yes, we are. Yes. Yep. So you can see that the area that's shaded in gray is what was um, previously approved as the limit of work. And then we went to the planning board 
and they approved us cutting some additional trees here to the south uh, in these two areas. They also approved some cutting of these um, trees near the street that weren't in good health. But the part that we're here today about these trees here to the south of the houses, um, there is a this is, I believe, the 50 foot wetland buffer. And then here's a 100 foot wetland buffer. Let me zoom in to make sure I'm quoting that correctly. I think I can find another map that says the distances, but it's not on this one. Um, this is shows the. There you go. Oh, there it goes. There's the 100 foot and 50 foot. So there's. Um, oh, yeah wetlands mostly to the south of the property and some on this edge here. And that's why the development is focused up in this area to the right. Um, we don't plan on removing the stumps of these trees. We're just going to um, cut them down. There's some very large pine trees. And um, once we cut those large pine trees, we need to cut some of the surrounding trees as well so that the um, when they sort of get, they would get destabilized in this area. And the tree removal has to do with uh, exposure to the uh, solar panels. Yep. Correct. Um, the we've oriented the houses towards the south, and then so this is the largest south-facing roof would be in, on these three houses going in that direction, and these trees are very tall and create significant shading on the houses. Part of our goal um, for making these houses affordable to live in for our future homeowners is that they also have affordable utility bills. And part of that is having access to solar energy. What were all the X's on that previous map? The trees to remove. And I counted like 34. And everything in the gray area was previously approved. And then uh -oh. the ones in this, uh, this area here yeah. the, and here are the additional ones we're asking for approval tonight. So 17 that need to be removed. It was the, so this, this site formerly had a house here at <clears throat> this location, oh. but, was a, but it's fairly wooded. Um, we've begun tree remo removal in the gray shaded area. Smith Vocational Forestry has been helping us before they <clears throat> go for the summer. Um, <laughs> uh, but we're going to hire a uh, tall tree is the company that we're working with for this removal down here, which is closer to the wetlands. But it'll be important for us to fell the trees towards the gray area to make the least disturbance. So we need to do it now before we begin constructions on the houses. Yep. Um, I think it'll also be good for the long term so that the homeowners aren't stuck with these giant trees if um, their health, some of them are not in good health. So that it, it, over time, it would pose a hazard as well. So the commission had issued a negative determination for the work uh, shown in gray previously, as well as five additional trees beyond that area. Um, and that, you know, as Megan had mentioned, that that area had been previously disturbed. You know, there was a house and a garage and some outbuildings. Um, and the commission found that those five trees um, beyond that area also made sense to remove. So this is for the additional 12 at this point. So there's a plan for mitigation tree plantings? So the way this was permitted, we don't have the same requirement to replace trees on a tree for tree basis mm -hmm. um, uh, under the affordable housing um, permitting that was done. The planning board has asked us to um, plant six new trees and we've agreed to do that along the street side of the property. Oh. So along the frontage. Uh-huh. Put low shrubs in though where the trees are removed so that you'll still have the uh, solar um, panel, you know, you'll still get the sun on, on the solar panels, but 
No, like a shrub that doesn't get any higher than 10 feet. Uh, that... Well, in this area down here, we weren't planning on removing the stumps, so it may be difficult to do significant planting without putting in topsoil. And we were just going to cut down the tops of the trees. There's a little bit of a drop off of a slope, so it's not really a yard area. It was We were going to leave it in a more of its natural state. Does that just make the project a little more affordable? Um, we also thought it would uh, minimize the amount of disturbance in, in the area. Uh -huh. Okay. Where are you putting the six new trees then? They would go um, on the north side near near the road. So m maybe a couple here and one in between the different driveways. Hmm. Okay. Those are out of the uh, buffer zone anyways. Yeah. Yeah. The right. new trees would be outside of the buffer zone. Okay. Well, it, the, the gray area is kind of like the limited lawn too. Yeah, you can see the contour. There's um, um, closer lines here. So yeah. that's kind of the edge of the, the lawn area. Okay. Any other uh, questions or comments from commissioners? No. I'd, I'd just ask whether some type of trees could be planted um, in towards the wetland to replicate some of that shading, at, at least in the wetland area that's being removed. And so, so something that's low enough that it wouldn't affect the house, um, but would have that same benefit for the buffer zone. Do you think that there will naturally be vegetation that will grow up in this area if we leave it natural? I mean, we were trying to do less of a disturbance by not pulling stumps and, you know, regrading down that far. Yeah, I mean, you could do the you could do some selective replanting of whips without um, bringing in any soil. I'm mean, eventually, you, I if you don't do any plantings, you're probably just going to be rife with invasives. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's the natural secession that will occur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Lots of Japanese not weed. Yeah, and, uh, and there was a lot. Antelope. There were a lot of invasives already present on that site. Um, so I would I would expect those would be the the first to propagate there. So I mean I I think the idea of bushes versus trees makes sense to me. Um, I just have a concern about the the viability of the plantings if it, if it's not aggraded and you know there isn't topsoil there. Well, you just get a um, an auger and dig a hole between the stumps and then. Uh, Put in a shrub, they'll they'll come up. <laughs> no, you don't need uh, great soil because most of the we would probably recommend the uh, native uh, shrubs that that go near wetlands, anyways. Although they're quite a bit up from the wetlands. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, uh, any ornamental shrubs, probably. There's yeah, even, a, even the native shrubs are free. Yeah, I, mean, I think you could drop in some native shrubs, but you'd, I wouldn't want to pull out the stumps. I mean, those pines are enormous, and yeah. pulling those stumps would be a massive disruption. Yeah, they secure the landscape. Yeah. How many pl uh, plantings are we thinking? I'd say about a dozen now. Mixed, uh, you know, put some dogwoods out there. They only get about 10 feet tall. Yeah. Hmm. A rhododendron. Yeah, I mean, they, there's there's lots of really nice ornamental shrubs that will do well back there. Yeah, this is not my area of expertise to recommend which shrubs, but you, I think you guys have addressed the concerns I have about 
not blocking the solar and having yeah. something low maintenance down there because it's past the slope. So it's not something the homeowners would be uh, watering or, you know, taking care right. of in an active way. Yep. Yeah, but if you drop it a dozen shrubs, it'll help with water runoff and a whole bunch of other things as well as uh, okay. birds and insects. Sarah, do we have that kind of like native shrub or native plant list as a resource that we can share with folks? Like, I know this has come up before, just like in other projects, but. Yeah, we, we don't, but I could certainly provide something. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, a Smith location on other landscapes. Yeah. The yeah. Are involved, they, they could certainly suggest something as well. That would be interesting. Even an arborist could uh, come up with something. You know. Yeah, it would be interesting for us to um, invite Smith Vocational, the forestry department, yeah. to come back and plant them, maybe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because you're not going to do that until late fall or after construction. <laughs> yep. And late, actually, late fall is prime time to, uh, to put in the yeah. shrubs. Yeah, let's get the young students digging holes between those big roots. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, forget the augers. <laughs> yeah, I have no further concerns. Yeah, that addresses mine as well. I have no further concerns either. Yeah, I'm good. Are there any uh, comments or um, from the public on this project? Can I ask a question? Process oriented. Um, there, there's an appeal period after. I'm wondering when we can start removing the trees. Oh. If it's if if you get a negative determination, I don't know if they change the taxes. And, um, I'm getting ahead of you. I'm sorry. I, I, I misunderstood what you were saying. Well, well, no, it's, there's a 21 day appeal period. One doesn't like you and wants to appeal. If it's a negative determination, I think you could start within 10 days. 10, 10 days, yeah. So that hasn't changed. <laughs> um, but there's no requirement that you wait not to begin the work. So it, as soon as you receive the permit, you would be able to do that. And someone could still still appeal, um, but you know, it doesn't seem likely in, in this case. <laughs> yeah. So no. there's, there's no legal requirement. There isn't 50 people sitting there ready to carve you up. Hey, well, for the hearing, again, it's another one. We don't close it because it's not really a hearing. And um, again, if the commission is finding that um, this work, along with the plantings that were discussed, won't. Um, Remove dredge fill or alter the associated BBW would be a negative three. I'm happy to move that. A second. All those in favor? Roll call. Jen? Yes. David? Yes. Paul? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Mason? Yep. All right, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Megan, and good luck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for your thoughtfulness about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have an executive session. All right. Thank you. Uh, so the intent is not to return to open session. So if anyone has anything else before the meeting ends, then now would be the time to do that. This is exciting news about the Sawmill Hills. Yes, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was relieving to close on that. It, um, yeah, you know, somebody a long time and it, it's nice to finally have it done. Yeah. Okay, we need a, a roll call um, to go into executive session. 
Um, we do. And Mesa, could you just read the purpose for the executive session to make it official? Uh, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property for interest in conservation lands where an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public. All right. So um, motion for executive session. So moved. I'll second. All right. And that also needs a roll call. So Jen? Yes. David? Yes. Paul? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Mason? Yes. All right. And 